Jimi Hendrix is the greatest guitarist of all time, and there's simply no two ways around that. In his tragically shortened career, he produced Mozart-like talent on the sixth string that defied imitation. So if he likes your band and respects you as a musician, this is kind of a big deal. During a Q&A event, as part of Patricia Fripp's compelling stories, The Inside Secrets, a documentary album, King Crimson guitarist Robert Fripp was asked whether it was true that Jimi Hendrix shook his left hand. Yes, he did, replied Fripp, trying his best to downplay it before spinning his story of the time that the two great guitar wizards would meet. The, the single time I met Jimi Hendrix was at the Revolution Club in Mayfair when Crimson were playing in 1969. It was the first time I sat down. I've always been a seated guitar player and to work in a rock group, you couldn't sit down. This decision to defy rock and roll styling standards was met acrimoniously by the band's frontman, Greg Lake, who apparently yelled, You can't sit down, you look like a mushroom. <laughs> My considered opinion was that the mushroom is a fertility symbol in many cultures. In 1969, King Crimson were only a matter of months into their infancy. Nonetheless, their virtuoso talent and innovative new sound had managed to stir up excitement within the music industry. The night when Fripp became the eponymous seated musician was June 2nd, a few months before their seminal prog rock debut record would be released in October. In the crowd that night, the greatest guitarist of all time was clad in white with his arm in a sling. After the gig, Hendrix approached Fripp, who described him as looking like one of the most luminous men he had ever met, and, considering he collaborated with David Bowie, that makes Jimmy one very luminous man indeed. Hendrix said to a humble Fripp, Shake my left hand, man. It's closer to my heart. For a while, that was the gilded punchline to Fripp's anecdote, and, for all intents and purposes, the greatest accolade that any guitarist could wish to receive. Hendrix's style was original, his playing was so revolutionary and skilled. Years later, Fripp bumped into the sister-in-law of King Crimson's first drummer, Michael Giles. She was in attendance on that momentous night that Hendrix shook Fripp's hand. And, as fate would have it, she was sat on the table next to Jimmy. She revealed to Fripp, and she said he was jumping up and down, saying, this is the best group in the world. Amen. In all due modesty, that is one of the best calling cards any working musician is ever likely to be able to present. In truth, while Hendrix and Fripp might have been profoundly different in a performative sense, their singularity is a tie that binds. As Fripp's calling card from Brian Eno also states, Fripp's contribution to the David Bowie albums are of a singular nature. He is a unique musician who doesn't do sessions in the normal sense. When people work with him, it is not only for his prodigious gifts as a player, but even more for his unusually fruitful and original imagination. He has the ability to send a piece of music into a quite different direction, and indeed, did so several times on these albums. In the words of Pete Townsend, Hendrix might have been offering up epiphanies, but Fripp was also throwing out colorful journeys that not many folks had ever heard before. His guitar playing was derivative of his own wandering muse and seemingly not a lot else. In truth, part of the reason people couldn't corroborate his mystical sound was that Fripp was borrowing from Bella Bartok Igor Stravinsky and other modern composers to craft a Technicolor prog rock sound. This is maybe why Hendrix loved King Crimson so much. After all, one of his heroes, and a man whose former home he eventually lived in, was the German-born Baroque composer George Friedrich Handel. And Hendrix dabbled in transposing classical work into rock himself. Great music is timeless. Thus, some of the very best abide by the formlessness of shunning usual genre tropes at seeking out any influence that connects. As Miles Davis once said, good music is good no matter what kind of music it is. 
Hendrix and Fripp as stars who used their majesty to support that message with some of the best good music anyone has ever alchemically conjured into creation. <laughs> 